Hello, this is a video tutorial about object initialization and this is the second part of this tutorial. In the first part we were looking at a very simple example. We just had a concrete class that was extending an abstract class which was implementing an interface and each of these were printing out something so that finally when we executed the code, then we could see that first the static blocks are executed when the classes are loaded and then when object instantiation is executing, then the non-static blocks are executing in the appropriate order. This is very standard Java thing, very boring stuff. Let's go a little bit and have a look at where the fun starts when it starts to be a little bit more complex and a little bit trickier. Let's go to the next branch which is named Singleton. The branch name is Singleton because in this case the concrete class has a field, a static field, just like singletons usually do, but it is not really a singleton. It just has a static field. We deleted the abstract class, we don't need that anymore, and also the interface. They would just make the things much more complex. Let's think about how the concrete class is loaded first, initialized, and then how an instance of this concrete class is created. The main code is the same as it was, we just create one concrete object, then we create a second concrete object. When we create the first one, then we expect first the static blocks executing, then the non-static blocks. Are you sure that this is the order of the blocks as they are executed? I am not. Let's just run it. We are creating an object from S4 the printout. As we can see on the printout, we are creating a concrete object. But the static blocks are not executed. First, the non-static block is executing. That's on the printout. Then the other non-static block is executing. And then the constructor. And only after that, the static block before the constructor and after the constructor and then again the block before the constructor and after the constructor and the constructor again for the first concrete object. Well actually the thing is that in this case we are creating two instances of the class concrete because we are creating one here in main and another one to be stored in the static field in the class itself. And when we start to create the instance which is stored in the static field, we have a class which is loaded but not fully initialized. And still we can use this not fully initialized class to instantiate an object. At the point when the class is loading and we reach at the line 8, we already have an instance of this class. What happens if the initialization of the class cannot finish? Well, it always finishes. No, that's Java. No, we can force it not to finish. And this is where really the hell gets loose. In this version, the static block after the constructor actually throws a runtime exception. It does it in a separate method because the Java compiler just does not allow us to throw an exception directly from a static block. Let's have a look at. Everything is underlined with red waves and the error code says on the lower left corner initializer must be able to complete normally. We have to apply this little trick that we 
invoke a static method and the compiler is not skilled enough or not that clever to realize that we are just throwing an exception anyway. An unchecked exception, but still a runtime exception. In this case, the class cannot be initialized. And if we run the main program, then we get a Java lang no class def found exception. In this case, the main program was modified a little bit to catch the first exception when it's thrown. That's a runtime exception that we are throwing there. But in the second case, when we try to instantiate the concrete class on the line 16, then we are not catching anything. Just a side note, because some people were thinking about that there are some issues waiting or not waiting enough, and that's the problem. Actually not, that thread sleep milli 1000, so one second waiting is only there, not to mix up the output. Because what we can see printed in black, that's the standard output, and the error code, a brownish color, that's the error output. These are two different character streams that go to the same console and they can intermingle if we don't wait here. Well, now it does not. And we get the same result. In some executions, it did. Therefore, I inserted this little waiting, which I just right now deleted. Okay, so we cannot get an instance of this concrete class if we throw up in the static initializer. And that's quite okay. But the issue is that we already have an instance of this concrete class, which we store in the static field me, me. What if we try to use that one? Let's run this code. Now we can see that the lines are intermixing. Let's put back this waiting. What we see here is that we get the same kind of exception as we got before. The class is not initialized properly. Therefore, we cannot access the field of this class when it was throwing already up. What's the takeaway from all this playing around and messing with Java? This is not a technique to use. This is not really a technique that uh, gives some real advantage for our programming. We shouldn't do things like that. It is not without reason that Java doesn't allow us to throw an exception from a static initializer. If we are fooling the Java compiler and come around and create a workaround and we still throw an exception that it just cannot realize that we are doing, then we are just putting us into some trouble that Java at the first place tried to save us from. To know all these things, that these things may happen, is only important that it comes into our cautious or uncautious mind when we are debugging some code which somehow exposes some error like that. And then if we remember these things, then it's sometimes easier to understand what is happening, how to debug the code, what could really be the root cause of the bug that we are hunting. And then it's easier to fix the code and eliminate all the bad style that may have been created or injected in the code that we are maintaining. Thank you very much. And I hope that you have really learned something from this tutorial and stay tuned because I plan to create other tutorials as well.